Hi guys and welcome back to the garden. We have had a really hot uh, week with very little rain so I am watering the um, mini clover that I planted uh, about two weeks ago now at this point. It's doing really well. It's getting bigger you can see here but because this soil right here that I had pulled the landscape fabric up under is so loose it is drying out fairly quickly. So this is the first time I've actually had to water it because we did get a lot of rain the first week I put it in there. But I wanted to take you around the garden because I got a ton done on Saturday. I didn't shoot any of it because it was one of those things where I am approaching going into maintenance mode and I just want uh, these things done as soon as possible. And I literally spent like from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. out here in the garden doing a lot of stuff. I didn't get any perennials cut back, which is something I still need to do, but that's part of that going into just maintenance mode and not getting things uh, planted after this certain period. And so I got a lot of my zinnias planted. I just tucked them in here and there. They're really tiny. The ones I started from seed, uh, the sunflower, Steve sunflowers are doing good and they're finally putting on some growth here. I also, you can see it right here a little bit, uh, put a distribution tubing, black distribution tubing from the top up there and ran it all the way down and connected it into my existing drip irrigation. Now that tubing is just black distribution tubing. It does not have any emitters on it. So I talked a couple videos ago about um, not running drip irrigation in this new section. And I'm not at this point. We're gonna let summer settle in and see how the plants acclimate, particularly the shrubs are the ones I'm more concerned about, like these hibiscus here. Uh, and if they start wilting during the summer, I can just tap into that black distribution tubing and run one emitter to whatever needs it. And that way, because a lot of these perennials are um, drought tolerant, so there's echinaceas, uh, catmints, a lot of this stuff, salvias don't need consistent water like some other plants do. There are no hydrangeas on this side that need consistent water. And so we're just gonna see how they do. This will be the first really experience I've had gardening other than my first year gardening where I didn't have drip irrigation. Those do get a little bit of sprinkler overflow from the yard. So I'm not too concerned about it. I think they'll do pretty good, but to the extent they need drip irrigation, it'll just be like a five minute task of tapping into there and adding an emitter uh, as it's needed. So like one of the places that's definitely going to need an extra emitter uh, is this hydrangea here. We've not had rain for a good while now. Um, and these are rated for full sun, and this was planted in the fall, but it is still wilting pretty bad, not having rain for, um, you know, several days and not running drip irrigation back here. I did mention in one of the last videos that I don't tend to have to run irrigation a lot in the backyard because it's slanted downhill, and a lot of it runs down here in this section anyway, and it gets plenty of water that way. And so I also didn't run drip irrigation to the bloomstruck hydrangeas that are blooming back there, pink uh, and a little purple right there. Those, we'll see how they do. They're also under a willow, but I've not had any issues with any of the plants in here, despite the willow being here and sucking up lots of water, uh, struggling because of a lack of water. So experiment on my part this year. Uh, I'm trying to think of some other things I got done this weekend. Um, just a lot of like weeding. I have this really interesting hoe called a Pro Ho, and it's also called Rogue Ho, I think is the brand. Uh, and it has it's shaped like a little triangle and it has really sharp edges and you just kind of roll it or scuff it around on the ground and it cuts the plants off at the base. And so I did that and did a lot of weeding this weekend um, when it was really cooler outside. I did get the snow sickle hydrangea planted next to the garage, made sure it was on an emitter. Uh, a lot of people were kind of guessing what might be wrong with that uh, shrub that I had here, the Dawn Redwood, Hamlet's Broom Dawn Redwood. And I think the reason it was on sale is because it was pretty torn up at the bottom of the base. So here's where I put the oak leaf so it can grow up and out a little bit. If it starts to spread a little bit, I'll just keep it trimmed away from the garage so we can enter it really easily. But there's an emitter right on it. So I think it'll do pretty good. I will be preparing in the next two weeks for my July garden tour, which is the biggest garden tour of the year and the one I spend the most time on. So if you're interested in that video, like and subscribe. Uh, 
last year I didn't have the uh, software ability to add labels and descriptions to plants. And so I re-added, re-uploaded the garden tour in December of last year and um, ah, wet and labeled a lot of the plants in the video. So I'm going, it may take me a while to get it edited, but I'm going to try and do that same thing this year. If you haven't watched last year's July garden tour, it has 160,000 views on YouTube now, which is kind of crazy. Um, for me, and then the December one also has a lot where I re-uploaded and labeled all the plants. If you didn't watch that garden tour before I do the July one, it might be a good time to because the garden has doubled in size. Uh, it's kind of interesting that a lot of people are watching last year's garden because this is a completely different garden than it was last year. None of this existed behind me. Really, the only thing we had was a little bed around this willow and the bed around the patio which this part of the bed was new and then you know the front and then all the sides uh, and even those have changed quite a lot from the past year the incredible hydrangea hedge is looking a little better it has recovered more than uh, i was a little concerned about but it's still leaning a little forward so i think that's just going to be how those are going to be this year which is a little disappointing but all hope is not lost it's always next year. They'll look just as good next year too. Um, and that's just something we'll have to deal with. I may come through and brace them up a little bit. Uh, I'm not sure if I'll spend the time to do that this year or not. I did come out um, Saturday as well and clean up this back uh, mini orchard area a little bit. I have decided that I am probably removing all of my fruit trees this fall. I'm not going to enter that um, work right now as it's starting to get hot. They have just not performed well. The apple didn't produce any fruit this year. Uh, the cherry did, but for some reason they all turned black and fell off. Um, I'm having some weird things going on with the pear with some limbs just completely dying. No clue what's happening here. And then the peach has a uh, peach leaf curl and most of the leaves that had curl has already fell off by now. It actually doesn't look that bad this year. Uh, I might consider giving this one another year. Uh, did have canker down here at the bottom. It doesn't look as bad this year. It does have some peaches on it, um, but we'll see how I'm feeling this fall. I really don't wanna have to spray stuff on fruit trees and fruit trees uh, in this area, I think can just be kind of difficult because of our late freeze. Sometimes you'll completely lose the fruit, which has happened several years in a row and this is the first year that I've actually will get peaches if a storm doesn't come through and knock them off. So they've just been really finicky over the past few years. I think I'm going to try and just stick with my veggies and my blueberry bushes and strawberries and that type thing. The tomatoes are looking good. I actually need to come through and oh, I actually have some tomatoes down here. Need to tie them up because they're getting really big. So I have limbed up my tomatoes in the past. Uh, this year uh, I don't think I'm going to thin them. They'll get plenty of airflow in the back back here, which is typically a concern if you want to thin them. There are a lot planted in this bed. This is a nine foot, I believe it is, nine and a half, ten foot. But here in Ohio, even though it gets really humid, I've not had a lot of issues with disease, um, surprisingly. So we got some fruit coming on. I will come through and tie those up to this trellis so they're looking pretty good. I have some raspberries over here as well, which if you followed along in that video, um, I planted or transplanted these from my earth boxes in the back yard uh, earlier this year and they're doing really well. I still haven't got drip um, run to this bed because we've had so much rain, it hadn't been a priority, but now that we're starting to dry up a little bit, I just need to come along and tap into this line and put a drip irrigation hose like I did here to this one. Some zucchinis coming on and I've got some watermelons that are really behind this year. Uh, this one's a little bigger but I also come through and cut down all that comfrey I was talking about because it had just out of control. One thing I completely forgot to mention is I came through and did a natural edge along this bed right here. So before I had the metal edging right here uh, and it looks 100 times better. I'm really happy about this boxwood hedge that's coming along nicely. Um, 
it'll start to grow in and thicken up here in the next couple years to come in and trim up the honeysuckle a bit too but i'm just really excited how it's coming along i shaped it a little bit on front this year to kind of straighten it up and topped it a little bit so it will start bushing out a little more but these are looking really nice and the dahlias i don't have any blooms or any actual blooms yet but i do have buds which i mentioned in the last video it's all just coming along really nicely and i'm excited about it so a lot of y'all have asked about my puppies and Margot and Lil are out here with me, and they are the mulch monsters. For some reason, they love eating and chewing on mulch, which is super annoying. Uh, and we're constantly having to get onto them. But they just grab a mouthful of mulch and just gnaw on it. I don't know why, but I'll introduce you to them right quick. So this is Lily. Lily is a one-year-old Springer Spaniel, and she is just the sweetest thing. Don't be fooled by our huffing and puffing. She has plenty of access to cool water and that's what she's going to get now. I don't know if you are familiar with Springer Spaniels, but they are the messiest drinkers. Uh, so we have a bowl inside, but we also keep one outside so they can get sufficient water before they come inside and make a mess all over the floor. And this is Margot, Lily's older sister. She's about a year and a half. Uh, English Springer Spaniel. So Margot, uh, although she's older, is a little stubborn. Maybe it's because she was spoiled more than Lil was, I'm not sure, but um, she requires a little more reinforcement than Lily does, and she teaches Lily all of her bad habits, which is not great. Drop it. Drop it. You are so bad. So for those of you wondering why they're not in more videos, it's because sometimes they need a little extra attention outside since they're still still pretty much in that puppy stage her always getting into something in the flower beds and they just need a little more attention and they can just roam out here alone uh, by themselves i did want to mention which i'm not sure that i've mentioned it in a video before or not but for those of you who really love pinstamen which this is the midnight masquerade from pre and winners uh, i have historically left the seed heads over winter I'm going to be cutting those off as soon as they're done blooming this year because since I left them over winter, it is coming up literally everywhere uh, and I'm considering a bit invasive. That's one of the things I'm probably going to do. I would rather feed the birds bird seed over winter than leave some of these things going to seed. The echinaceas have been coming up kind of everywhere um, and we've got, this is the penstemon. It's coming up here. It's, this is, I only had two plants back here, but it spread to all of these little plants over here. Um, there's more coming up right here. And it's just literally everywhere in this area. That's it too. Um, and I've just like had to strategically pull and remove it um, as it's come up. And it is a beautiful plant, but I kind of want want it to stay where it's at. I don't want it moving around in the flower beds. Um, because although I, I struggle, and I think I've talked about this before, with formality versus cottagey. So some areas of the garden, I'm going for a very cottagey look, like this new perennial area. This bed, surprisingly, has turned from pretty formal to more cottagey. Uh, really, I'm losing more formality as I tend to garden more. I just tend to like that look of... I don't want it to look overgrown um, and unkept, but a kept, slightly bushy, um, managed, cottagey garden uh, is kind of the look I'm going for. So it's going to be a balance, I think, to achieve that uh, over the coming years. But as these things grow in over the next couple years, uh, and I have to either move or remove things as they get bigger, uh, that's the look I'm striving for, I think. Something that uh, the ground is covered, so weed management is covered, and I'm not s terribly concerned about weeds growing up. Uh, but also just plants mixing and melding into one another um, as the seasons progress. So thank you guys for joining me, and remember, in a world full of hate, be a light. I'm going to go spend time with my puppies and put them back inside. They, despite being hunting dogs, they um, are very much in favor of the air conditioner, These, this time of year anyway. Take care, everyone. Bye.